So today, what I thought I'd do was tell you a little bit about books, my books in particular, and how they come about, and then sort of talk to you about stormy weather, which is what was in the programme. And then I thought you could help me and you could perhaps do some drawing with me. Because normally it's me doing all the drawing up there and you watching um, and being amazingly kind about the dreadful drawings that I do. Because normally at home when I'm drawing, I don't ever draw with a big fat felt pen. I draw with pencils so that if I make a mistake, I can rub things out. But of course at the book festival I have to draw with a big thick black felt pen so you see all my mistakes up there in their glory. So today you're going to help me draw because I'm going to show you how to draw various creatures from stormy weather. But before that, let's find out how stormy weather came about. Because it actually, I guess stormy weather, the idea must have started 11 years ago. Books are very, very slow. They don't kind of happen like that. They kind of float into your mind and they sit at the back of your mind for a good while, just percolating and bubbling along nicely until finally the idea comes together. So Stormy Weather came about actually out of this book, No Matter What, which I did 11 years ago and which some of you might be familiar with. And um, it's a fox on the cover. It's a book about love, unconditional love, love without limit. And the number of children who said to me, aye, that book you did about the kangaroos. <laughs> right, guys, this is not a kangaroo. This is a fox. And I know I'm not very good at drawing foxes. It must be something to do with the size of its hips or something. It's got these big, you know, bouncy, bouncy, bouncy kind of hips. But it's a fox. So when we, I finished this book and loved it to pieces. And I think it has been loved by a lot of children and parents all over the world. And my publisher said, could we have another one? And I said, no, because actually, to be honest, I thought this book said everything that I wanted to say. And I didn't really want to go on and on and on about love, because people go, oh, enough of that. And I didn't want to go on and on about the characters either. So it was almost like I put the characters to the back of my mind and got on with other things, one of which was this book. Let me see. I could even put some of the pictures from it up. The Trouble with Dragons, which was what I talked about here last year in this very tent at this time of year. This is a book about, um, well, it's about matters green. It's about climate change and it's about what we can all do to hopefully look after our planet. But it did end on a rather, well, not gloomy note, but a rather uncompromising note. That was the last spread in the book. And it was a baby dragon asking its parent at bedtime, which is when the big questions come up at bedtime. I don't know about you, but when I go to bed, that's when I start worrying. Anything I've had to worry about during the day gets a bigger, bigger, bigger worry at bedtime. And this little dragon is looking up at its parent and saying, so, was this story true? Was what this book said the truth? Are we really going to have to do something to save the planet? Because if we don't, are we really all going to be totally stuffed? And basically, the answer is, so if you know a dragon, and most of us do, ask it if it thinks that this story is true. For if we can't see that our stories are linked, then sadly, like dragons, we'll soon be extinct. Not what you would call a happy ending. It, and, you know, I, I couldn't write a happy ending for this story because it's so much in the realm of I don't know what happens next. None of us know what's going to happen to the planet. We can't actually see into the future. And to say that I did know what happened would be wrong. It would be an absolute big fib. But at the end of the book, the very last picture was the dragons playing in the snow which was my way of trying to come up with a slightly more cheerful picture than, oh no, we're all doomed. So the dragons are playing in the snow, which does tend to indicate that possibly the planet's not going to get that hot if we can still have snow. But then I thought, hang on a minute, Leori. Your job is not to frighten children. Your job is to produce books that are as beautiful and as truthful as you can possibly manage. And also books that can be used at bedtime to calm down fears and worries 
And to some extent, with the trouble with dragons, I raised a whole load of fears and worries so that we could explore them, so we could ask questions about them. So my sort of way of trying to compensate for that was to write Stormy Weather, this book, that one there. Now, for those of you who are good at spotting kangaroos, you will notice there is a kangaroo on the cover of this book. That's me drawing, by the way, drawing one of the pictures from The Trouble with Dragons. Drawing with a pencil, because when you draw with a pencil, you can rub things out. So when we all draw together later on today in this tent, I've supplied a whole load of pencils, so you can draw with pencils rather than pens. And my generosity knows no bounds. You can take the pencils home with you. They are yours to keep onwards. So here we have, oops, no we don't. Here we have the cover with some kangaroos on it. And because it's 11 years on from when I first drew those foxes, I think actually the big fox there is my small fox from No Matter What. I think it's small, grown up, with children of her own. And she has her own little baby tucked up in her arms. And the baby has still got the same toys that she had when she was a little girl. And they're reading a book. Because actually, this book, Stormy Weather, is about reading. It's about bedtime stories. It's about how we all, even grown-ups, even grannies, even grandpas, even unbelievably old people like me, still need a good night story at bedtime. I cannot go to sleep unless I fall asleep in a book with a great big line down the middle of my face from having fallen asleep in the middle of the book. I need a story at bedtime. Hands up, who needs a story at bedtime? Yes! Good, so you'll get this. This is most definitely a book about that. And it begins with just a picture. And I love beginning books like that because it's a picture without any words. It's like the moment where the curtains go up on stage with a big swoosh and you go, wow, what is this about? You just get the scene set. So it's one of those glorious early winter nights where it's really, really, really windy. And the two foxes are running through the woods together, heading home because it's bedtime. And also because it's, it's stormy, it's windy. It's one of those nights where the best place to be is inside, warm and safe, tucked up, with the fire on and a good book. So that's the first page. Let's go. So it's